Good afternoon, or whatever time of day you're watching this. I hope that it is today, this afternoon, this day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We serve a risen Savior. He lives. I want to tell you an Easter story. It's not the typical Easter story, but it's in the Bible. Uh, we usually dwell on the women that go to the tomb, and were there three of them? Were there five of them? Uh, different accounts seem to give us a different number and a little bit of different circumstances. It would seem that Mary stayed behind at the tomb and had a personal encounter with Jesus. But I want to talk about that afternoon after the women had come back and reported everything to the 12 or 11 since Judas was gone, there were other disciples. And it says in Luke 24, it says, Behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They had all come in to, the, uh, to Jerusalem for the, uh, for the Passover, and some of them were lucky enough to have gotten uh, lodging in the city itself. Uh, some had lodging, like Jesus and the Twelve, appear to have uh, stayed with the family of Lazarus uh, in Bethany, which is only about a mile away. But these guys didn't, weren't quite so lucky. They got lodging about seven miles away. And this says they're walking to Emmaus, and they're disappointed. Things were not going as they had expected. And it says that they were talking with each other about all these things that had taken place. The arrest, the trials, the uh, march to Golgotha, the crucifixion. And it says what, that they were talking and discussing uh, as they walked along. And it says that Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. That would not be unusual. People just walking along tended to congregate together and socialize as they walked along. Uh, but Jesus himself came and walked with them, and it says that their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He was just a fellow traveler. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and are unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? How, how could anybody not know what, what happened? Uh, and he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. They were aware of the scriptures. They, they knew the messianic expectation, or at least a version of it, they knew the scriptures that talked about the victorious Messiah. They knew uh, Isaiah chapter 9, uh, where it says, A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. They were aware of that messianic prophecy. They were probably aware of Daniel in chapter 7. It says, And to him was given dominion, 
glory and a kingdom that all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. They might have even been aware of the message that the angel gave to Mary, his mother. It says, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great. He will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. They were aware of those scriptures. They go on explaining to Jesus. Also, some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not find. And Jesus said to them, You foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. See, they got part of it. They, they knew some of the, uh, of the scriptures. And of course, they were dwelling on the stuff that they liked and, you know, putting aside the stuff that they didn't like. But Jesus tells them, was it not necessary? In order to redeem Israel, it's going to be necessary for him to do some other things. It was necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory. And it says, then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. I don't know about you, but I would love to have been in that Bible study. I would really like to see everything that Jesus brought forth out of uh, beginning with Moses. Uh, I can think of one big one right off that they were neglecting. Uh, Isaiah 53, of course, where it says, He was despised and forsaken of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. There are likely a great many more scriptures that Jesus brought forth to instruct these two. But they were truly privileged to have received that Bible study that day. And it says that they approached the village, the village of Emmaus, where they were going, and he acted as though he were going farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. And when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And at that point he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, another seven miles, and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord really has risen, and he's appeared to Simon. And they began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. And it's while they were talking about these things, they were telling each other the stories of what had happened. 
It says that he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Shalom Alechem, peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still could not believe it because of their joy and amazement, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. And now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. We should claim this for ourselves to have our minds opened to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The other Easter story. The witnesses are all clear. Even the, the witnesses that try to dispel the resurrection would have us believe that somehow Jesus possibly revived in the tomb and rolled away the stone and made his escape. Defeated the soldiers, of course, that would be what uh, he would have to do, uh, and got away or that the, his disciples came and defeated the soldiers and stole his body. But nobody, even those writing at the time, nobody says that there was no body. Nobody says that Jesus never existed like some modern uh, theorists would like to believe today. Everybody in those days knew that Jesus was crucified. Everybody knew that he was buried in a tomb. Nobody denies that. But we have the testimony of witnesses that he rose from the dead. And what is the significance of that? Well, throughout his life, he said that all of the scriptures from Moses through the prophets, through the Psalms, it's all about me. I am the focal point. He says, I am that eschatological character referred to in the scriptures as the son of man. He says the person that is uh, foretold to to uh, inherit the throne of David. That's me. Oh, and besides that, I was in heaven before with my father, and I came to earth, and I will be going back. And then I will be coming to establish a kingdom upon the earth. Now, <clears throat> all kinds of people make all kinds of claims like that. I have a uh, friend that I went to high school with, he and I played in rock and roll bands together. And since the early 70s, he has resided at the Nevada State Hospital because he claims that he is Jesus, uh, that he is uh, any day now going to establish God's kingdom upon the earth. Um, that's been 50 years now, and he still hasn't accomplished that. Jesus did what he said he was going to do. Numerous times he told the disciples he was going to Jerusalem, he was going to be crucified, he was going to come back from the dead after three days. He told them that several times. And then he did it. 
and he has established the truth of his message, the truth of his claim, the legitimacy of his claim to be the king of all the earth. And that is something that we can rejoice in.